Hello everyone, my name is Avalon and we are still making our way through this Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time randomizer. Um, we finally got Child Link which is huge um, and is going to make a big difference for us uh, progressing onwards. Although I do need some more um, Deku Seeds for the Slingshot, that's for sure. Um, last episode I talked about Breath of the Wild. Um, I was very conscious of how negative I was being, which may or may not have messed up the pacing a little bit, but um, I am sorry for that. So in order to be more positive this time, I thought I'd swing it around a bit. You know, last time I spoke about Breath of the Wild, which is A, in my opinion, not a Zelda game, irrelevant to the fact that it is titled as such. Um, but, you know, I will talk about here my, my favourite Zelda game, um, which works out nicely because I didn't talk about it um, when I was discussing um, dungeon themes as well and I think it's got really good um, good sets for dungeon themes actually. Um, so we're going to talk about Majora's Mask a little bit. Hooray! Um, again, you know, not that long ago, um, Ocarina of Time was not, no one argued with the fact that it was the best Legend of Zelda game in all of the world um, and I'm not gonna try and take away from people who think that you know, um, but it, it did definitely become a cool thing for people to do where they started hating on it. Um, it didn't make any sense to me, but that's what people started to do, so let them do what they want to do, I suppose. He's a big boy, isn't he? Okay, so I actually I forgot that you meant to stop him in a particular spot. So we'll let him zoom past super quick. Um, but yeah, so it used to be really cool to... Uh, it used to be really like unique to not like Ocarina of Time. Um, and I'm not going to stand here and try and suggest that I don't like Ocarina of Time because that's just stupid. I love that game. Um, but a lot of people have started pointing out the flaws in it. And you know, it is a flawed game. Let's not pretend that it's not. But for me, it's always been about Majora's Mask. The world building and story beats of that game are just so strong. Um, and there's just not a lot that anyone could ever do to change my opinion on that. Uh, I'm too early away. Um, yeah, so, you know, Majora's Mask. So I'll start with the uh, the dungeons and stuff. Oh, come on, man. Um, and talking about, you know, how dungeons actually matter. And how we progress forward through them. Um, that one, yeah. Um, so, yeah, you start in Clock Town um, as a Deku scrub. And you have to go and do things. And this is like what I was talking about with the Spirit Temple in this game, where things get recontextualized because you have to go and do a bunch of things as Deku Link, which is a real challenge in itself. Um, because there's so much stuff that... Yeah, that's the right song. Uh, there's so much stuff that you, you can see that you wish you could do and you can't do, even leaving the city, for example. Oh! Um, leaving the city. Yeah, that's it. So you can't even leave the city um, as Deku Link or anything like that. You just have to make do of what you've got, and then you come back and you do it again as um, Link. And it's just, you know, it's that recontext recontextualizing. Sorry, with the stuff that you've already done, and it's just, it's just good, it's just good. Um, then you make your way to the swamp and you have to use a combination of your Deku Mask and your Link abilities to do cool stuff. Um, and then you have to further um, increase your moveset to involve the, um, the bow. And it's just a, a clever way to slowly build Link's abilities by putting some of them behind masks and putting some of them in other places and similar. Um, I always love how he spins when you do this. He just looks so, so silly. Um, so yeah, it just... Um, 
it's just a good way to build on the abilities. Um, and you don't have to do too much to get there, you just have to follow a few little story tricks. Um, and then you um, essentially become the link that you're always supposed to be. And from there, it's just a case of um, making your way to the swamp. Which in itself shouldn't be too much of a challenge anyway. Oops. I don't think I'm going to have to do this in time. I'm going to run out of bombs because I'm just rubbish. Oh, there you go. Seriously? I got three rupees for that. Wow. Hmm. What did that immediately light? What lit it? Oh, that was weird. Oh, well. right, let's go have a look at the old Goron shop, see what we've got in here. Uh, nothing of use. Okay. Cool. <clears throat> um, so yeah, so you go to the swamp, you follow the very short linear storyline, um, you do some cool stuff with the Deku family which gives you a call to action in the fact that monkeys are trapped. Um, you have a version of the Lost Woods because why not, I guess. I'm not a really big fan of reusing assets, I know that Majora's Mask is built on reused assets but like at least its concepts are new and unique. I feel like the... Um, the section there about um, the Lost Woods is kind of, or Forgotten Woods I think it's called in, in that one, I think it's actually called something slightly different to try and hide the fact that it is a direct rip-off of something that's been before. I don't know what the bombs are going to have on it. Why am I like this? No, I need one more, one more bomb. I'm gonna go and get one from somewhere. Hmm. But yeah, so you go through the Lost Wood stuff, you save, you find out the monkey's been captured and that his brother monkeys are sad because their brother's been captured, which makes sense. Um, and then you go back, you do the Swamp Temple, and you see the monkey. Um, the monkey teaches you the song to open the temple, which is how songs play into this one because you don't have the warp songs, you have the song of soaring, which is far better because you only really have to remember one song. And it gives you like progression based unlocks, which in a time based game matters. Um, so yeah, you do all that, you reset time, bada bing bada boom. Um, and then with your new, your new found arrows, you can actually get to the next one, um, which is the Snow Peak place. Um, and I like Snoopy personally, I think it's cool. Um, I don't think I'd be alone in thinking that. Um, I like that a fire themed tribe has suffered to ice, I guess. Um, I don't know if that's the best way to word that, but that's how I feel about it. So expensive. But who knows what I could get. run back up these stairs. Um, so yeah, so it's nice to see fire-based tribe and then the, the temple's kind of fire and ice, which is really unique. It's something that, much like electricity and water in this game, I haven't seen before. Um, I mean, you know, fire and ice is not an uncommon thing, it's just when it comes to games and stuff it, it seems to be a dangerous pick, so people would tend to avoid it. Um, so you do that. And then you go and do the Great Bay, which is a beach coastal thing, and you do the um, that's where you do the Jodo Fortress as the pre-dungeon challenge. Um, and the pre-dungeon challenges, um, although I haven't really mentioned them much, they get more and more challenging as you go through. Um, so the first one you do the you have to do the boat ride and free the monkey. The second one, oh they're all back. What a waste. Um, the second one you have to um, make a Goron go to sleep by finding Grandad Goron and learning half of the song and then put him to sleep, learn the other half of the song and do some like Lens of Truth shenanigans and whatnot. Um, then the third one you have to do a stealth Gerodo Fortress thing um, and then the fourth one, shouldn't have thrown that. Yeah. 
Um, the fourth one, you have to do um, a whole second dungeon, essentially. I mean, Gerodo Fortress and the Akana Castle are basically additional dungeons. Uh, it's not a complete waste, I suppose, but it's definitely not the best thing I've seen. Cool, right. So that's, I think that's Goron done, isn't it? Yeah, that's it, you know. Um, so we go via the Lost Woods to... No, we'll go via the Lost Woods. Let's go through the right one. There we go. Awesome. So yeah, but then the, the beauty of Majora's Mask is that there's so much more to it than that brief sort of uh, story progression that you can develop your way through. Um, you get so much more from from the game than that. They don't they don't insult your time or your intelligence or anything by reducing the amount of game you get. Um, just by having it such a short game with the four four dungeons, you actually have so much more to it, and it's awesome because um, yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's just really really clever, I think. Anyway, um, that you have all of this. Excuse me. Uh, all these storylines and stuff, so each character in Majora's Mask, for those who don't know, they kind of have their own timetable, so like I mentioned already, it's all based around a three-day cycle, um, and characters, they do things over their three-day cycles. Um, some characters do, I don't know, they walk to certain places, some, uh, like there's a hotel room you can get if you check in before a certain time, because a uh, Goron has the same name as you and he's booked a room. But then, of course, you are. Oh. Is she not there yet, then? Hmm. I wonder why Sarah is not there. Um, yeah, so each, each individual has their own schedule and stuff, so they all feel like real people. You don't feel like you're just playing a game, you feel like you're experiencing the world. And because these side quests are completely side quests, you know, you don't have to do any of them, theoretically. You, know, you just have to get enough masks through playing the game and such, which, you know, a lot of the, the main progression stuff will give you those masks anyway. Um, but that's what you need to worry about, is getting the masks. Um, yeah, so there's no pressure, you don't have to like do certain side quests or anything. You can do any side quest you want, you can go through any route you want, and... Um, some of them are progression gated, um, which... Although it's not perfect, some of that is a little bit frustrating. You know, it's annoying when you've done, um, for example, all of Cafe's stuff up to the point where you have to go to Akana Canyon, but you can't get there for whatever reason. Um, you know, stuff like that is a little bit frustrating, but it's it's minimal, um, whilst retaining the non-linearity of, of what you can and can't do. And some of the stories are actually quite sad, you know? Um, and I know people talk about how dark Majora's Mask is a game all the time, but you know it is. It's it's got some really real things, and I appreciate that's because it's um you know it's based on depression and and stuff, and the way that it was made 
was also not the best, you know, but hey ho. Um, that's just one of those things, unfortunately. It's been, it's done, we can't change how that was done, we can just learn from it. Um, so yeah, I, I guess my, my, my point is is that, you know, the, the non-linearity of that game is really what makes it unique. Um, and, you know, I've been talking a lot about themes of dungeons and stuff, so the themes of the Majora's Mask dungeon are just something unique as well. You know? That's another thing to, to focus on as Celebrate really, is just how unique these dungeons are. Um, taking, for example, the, the Swamp Temple. Um, I know I talk about recontextualizing things all the time, it's almost like a buzzword at this point. But it is, and it should be um, celebrated, because the you know the Swamp Temple, you go through it with poisonous water, and then you can go through it again with clear water. It, it does, it recontextualizes what state the dungeon's in, and then by extension what state the world around the dungeon is in, you know? Um, because it, it cures the whole swamp. And stuff like that, it's just, it's just clever, you know, it's just clever. Um, oh, come on, why are so many bundles of arrows everywhere? How oh, frustrating. Hmm, yeah, so, yeah, and then the same with the Goron Temple, um, once you beat it, it becomes spring, all of the ice melts and whatnot, and it's just another sort of way to recontextualize an area because you saw it in winter, and now you see it in spring. So yeah, it's just I, I, I think it's pretty cool. So yeah, uh, right, we're gonna go up here into Lost Woods, do the bonus seeds challenge thing, do the music challenge thing, head to Zora's domain. So yeah, and I also like the um, in Majora's Mask, if you did choose to go and do all the side quests, the reward was just bonkers. Um, like bonkers bonkers. Like the Fierce Deity's Mask is just beyond stupid. Um, in it, its power, it completely nullifies the final boss, which I'm actually not a big fan of. I think it makes it a bit too easy, but... Oh, hang on. Yeah, it, was, it does make it far too easy, but it is what it is at the end of the day. Um, they had to reward you, and they picked a very good reward that it values the time that you put into the game. Um, and I appreciate that. so careful doing this with uh, the controller I've got because it's so sensitive that using a right stick if it flicks too far the other way you'll do the opposite note. Oh that time though I just did it flat out wrong. Right come on it's easy stuff. Silence of concentration slowly settling in. There we go, cool. Oh, it wasn't even that worth it. I mean, it wasn't the end of the world, but it just wasn't that worth it. Super, well, climb up the ladder and to Zora's domain. But yeah, I also, I, yeah, I really like um, how personal, you know, um, Majora's Mask actually gets. It really does um, make sure that you are engaged with it, for lack of better words. Um, it's... I've just noticed that makes a big arrow. I've never noticed that before. 
Oh, I forgot I can do the river stuff as well. And the frogs. Oh, there's actually quite a lot I can do around here. That's handy. Um, <coughs> super, yeah. So I might actually leave um, storage to main to next episode, maybe. But yeah, so, yeah, Majora's Mask, where was I? That was at the uh, Snow Peak Temple. So, again, recontextualize the area and stuff. So now, once you've done the uh, the Water Temple, um, you know, it doesn't do anything particularly special. It doesn't create, like, the new world for you to live in and stuff. It just is. Um... So yeah, it's not like it makes the game, the Zora's place, a whole lot different, but it's because it's not just about that, it's about the, the lives that you touched, and in that one you actually rescue a Zora's eggs, you know, a woman, or female Zora, I guess, I don't know. Ruto. She uses her eggs. <laughs> it's not Ruto either, is it, in that game, it's a different name. Irrelevant. Um, Lulu uses her eggs, and uh, it's very sad and stuff. And Mikhail was supposed to go and get them for her, and uh, he doesn't, um, because he's too busy being dead. Oh, come on, what is that? Um, which is sad for him, you know, no one wants to be dead. Um, I don't know how I'm gonna get this chicken over there now. had that as an issue before. I've never messed that up so badly. I will mean, just zoom back up here and get it done. So yeah, Lulu and her eggs. So you've rescued her children um, and she regains her voice. So although it doesn't recontextualize it from a gameplay point of view, it really does recontextualize someone's life. You know? And I think it's really nice that it just does that. It just fixes someone's life. You know? It's not no like big um, grand change in season, or um, the swamp isn't depoisoned or anything, but yeah, it's just nice. Um, and then for Ikana, the, the river runs again, which is like, yeah, who cares. Um, <laughs> but again, Ikana, you have deep stories, you know, the, the old king of Ikana was, um, was killed, and that's sad for him. Um, um, but also there's a little girl whose dad has been um, cursed by the Gibdo curse um, and he's turning into a Gibdo so much like a child you know she's a she's alone out there there's no one around there to, to help her or anything and so she um, locks him in the cupboard and, and hides from the problem and tries to make it so the problem's gone away um, I just think it's really sweet that that's her solution, you know, as a child that is a reasonable solution, but the actual story itself is super sad. And again, when you, uh, when you get out of that situation, when you get out of the situation, it does, it does make a big difference. I don't know how many times I'm expected to do the frogs in the randomizer. I don't know if it's just once or what, but it's going to be all five times. Okay. Gave me rupees. Is that going to be a, a constant thing? Let's find out. So we'll do one more. We don't want to overdo it on rupees because we might need them later. That's something in the randomizer that I could have changed the settings for and didn't. It seems a bit weird that I'd have to do it all. But equally, I don't even remember if there's a piece of heart at the end of it, so who knows. 
Um, but yeah, so there's some really deep stories in Majora's Mask, and it can get really sad for some parts of it. Um, so, I recommend giving it a play if you haven't already, to be honest. Um, there's randomizers for that as well, so maybe if this does okay, you know, I'm, like, I'm not a big YouTuber on my own channel. Um, I tend to do things in the Mario Maker community, but if this does alright on my own channel, then maybe I'll uh, consider doing one with the Majora's Mask and... I don't know what I'll talk about during that. Maybe I'll just talk about life. Who knows? Um, but yeah, it's such a, such a brilliant game. Um, and it is really deep. And even playing as an adult and going back through and, and being part of the stories that people go through and stuff you, is, is relatable. It's understandable and it's sad. That's what it is. It's sad. But yeah, so I've been Avalon. And I'll, uh, Catch you hopefully on a happier time. <laughs>